The Kansas Jayhawks are one of the best college teams in the nation year in and year out. They pull in plenty of top tier recruits every single year and produce plenty of elite young talent for professional teams to draft. Year in and year out, they qualify for the postseason and sometimes they have good runs themselves. They have one of the best coaches in the land and since 2000, they have basically run the Big 12. Oh wait, we're not talking about their basketball team today, but rather their football team. Somehow, the Kansas Jayhawks football team has been the complete opposite of what their basketball team has represented. Despite winning the Orange Bowl in 2007 and going 12 and 1, Kansas hasn't even come close to matching that record. Since 2010, they haven't posted a winning record, and to make matters worse, they haven't even won more than four games in a season since 2010. Now things could change for the football program as they've recently hired Les Miles as the head coach, but today we're going to be looking into what has happened at Kansas and why their football team has been historically awful for the past 10 seasons. Since Mark Mangino left the program after 2009, Kansas has been attempting to find a coach that could lead the program. They've hired four different coaches since 2010 and their previous three before Les Miles have all failed. The first head coach in this decade was Turner Gill, who was the head coach for 2010 and 2011. In his two seasons, he won a total of five games and just one game in the Big 12. He was able to upset number 15 Georgia Tech in the second game of 2010, but other than that, his tenure was lackluster. In his very first game, he lost to North Dakota State by a score of 6-3. Kansas scored 10 points or less in 10 of the games that Gill was the head coach over that two-year period. In Gill's second season as the coach, he had a fairly young team filled with underclassmen and inexperienced upperclassmen. They actually won their first two games of the year against McNeese State and Northern Illinois, and Kansas football was finally back. However, Gill ended his Jayhawk tenure on a 10-game losing streak. The Jayhawks were defeated by Georgia Tech 66-23, destroyed 70-28 by Oklahoma State, and lost 43-0 at Texas where they managed 46 yards of total offense. 46 yards of total offense in one whole game. They blew a 24-3 fourth quarter lead against Baylor, allowed Texas A&M to score 61 points in just three quarters, and proceeded to blow a 10-0 lead against their rivals Missouri. He never could just get the program rolling, and as a result, he was let go. After Gill came Notre Dame legend Charlie Weiss. Weiss consistently underperformed at Notre Dame and was looking for a fresh start, and Kansas was looking for a brand new head coach who could lead the team and get them out of the slump. The result of Weiss's hire, however, was basically rock bottom. Charlie was the head coach from 2012 to 2014, and Kansas won a total of seven games and just two in the Big 12. His first year actually got off to a decent start. He was able to gather two good quarterback prospects as Dan Christ of Notre Dame followed Weiss to Kansas and Jake Heaps transferred from BYU to come be the quarterback for the Jayhawks. But in his first season, Kansas won just one game, which was the opener against South Dakota State. In that first season, the Jayhawks lost five games by seven points or less. Still, the team just wasn't good enough and of course with a bad team, attendance dropped a ton. In 2013, the Jayhawks won three games and finally won their first Big 12 game since 2010, with that win coming against West Virginia. But when Kansas lost this season, they lost. Every single loss in 2013 came by at least two possessions. Weiss actually lost control of the team during this season, as he probably did in his others as well. In the win against West Virginia, Weiss left the locker room early during pregame and let the players handle the speeches themselves. It was also reported by a former player that some of the teammates went to the strength coach to tell him that they were tired of listening to Weiss. In 2014, Charlie didn't even last till the end of the season. They won three games this season, however, and once again got a win in the Big 12, this time against Iowa State, but the team was still awful. They lost by at least 13 points in seven of their nine losses. Fans were fed up and the attendance showed that. In Weiss's opener against South Dakota State, Kansas had 46,000 people in attendance. In his final home game against Texas, the attendance was at 36,000. Weiss was replaced after Game 4 and Clint Bowen took over as the interim head coach, but he couldn't lead the Jayhawks to success and Kansas finished with a 3-9 record. Kansas was looking for a new head coach for the third time since 2010 and they decided to replace Weiss with David Beatty. Surely, after Weiss and Gill, things couldn't get any worse. Except, it did. In Beatty's first season in 2015, the Jayhawks didn't even win a single game. There were only two games during the season where they lost by less than 7 points, coming against South Dakota State and TCU. Clearly, they were not the most talented team in the nation, and Beatty said that almost a third of the roster were on scholarships, meaning that the majority of that roster was filled with walk-on players. He knew that Kansas was going to be in for a deep rebuild, but it didn't get off to the start that in 2016, the team was able to actually win some games this year, and they actually won two. 
This time, they defeated Rhode Island in their opener and then famously defeated Texas 24-21 in overtime. In 2017, however, things proceeded to get even worse. They won their opener against Southeast Missouri State and then lost their final 11 games of the season. Attendance dropped to as low as 21,000 against Baylor that year and things were officially at rock bottom for the program. This past 2018 season was Beatty's last year and the team won three games. They started off at 2-1 defeating Rutgers and Central Michigan, but then lost four in a row before they were able to defeat TCU by one point and then proceeded to end the year off with four more straight losses. So if you were keeping track at home, Kansas won a total of 18 games since 2010 and just five of those were conference wins. They won one game or less in three out of those years and went winless in the Big 12 in four of those years. In comparison, Clemson has won 27 total games in the past two seasons and has won 15 conference games in the past two seasons as well. Over these years, Kansas consistently missed out on finding the guy who could lead the program and as a result, the team took a huge hit. Only a handful of Division I college teams have done just as bad as Kansas did in this run. Recruiting at Kansas hasn't been great either. They have still been able to recruit some good players, but Kansas hasn't been able to produce many NFL players. In total, they have had five players drafted since Mangino left the program, and all of them have been drafted in the fourth round or beyond. The biggest player the program has really produced since 2000 has been Aqib Tlaib, but the talent drop off after that is immense. Since 2010, the players drafted by Kansas have been Tanner Hawkinson, Ben Heaney, Ja'Cory Shepard, Dexter McDonald, and Dorrance Armstrong. I'm writing this video before the 2019 draft begins, so this list could very well change, but right now, Kansas isn't even averaging one player drafted per year since 2010. The recruiting class rankings have also consistently finished in the bottom of all Power 5 teams. In this 9 year span, the highest they were able to reach was 40th best in the nation in 2011, with their lowest coming in 2012 where they had the 81st ranked class in the nation according to 24-7 sports. They have consistently hovered around the 60s marks throughout these years, but they have yet to even break into the top 30s and as a result, it has costed them. Last year however, Beatty signed a pair of 2018 rivals top 250 players in quarterback Corion Harris and running back Puka Williams. Those two signings were big as it matched the number of top 250 rivals high school recruits that Kansas had signed in its previous 12 classes combined. They also haven't been able to recruit a top quarterback to lead their team and that has been at the root of their deep issues. Among the list of quarterbacks to suit up for Kansas, the best names include Dane Crist, Jake Heaps, and Jordan Webb. Being in the Big 12, you're going to need to have a high scoring offense to be able to keep up with other teams. In the past, we've seen plenty of Oklahoma teams drop 50 like it was nothing. Kansas, on the other hand, hasn't been able to even have half the offense that any good Big 12 team has had. Since 2010, they have only placed in the top 100 of offensive scoring one time in 2011 when they placed 95th in the nation. A Power 5 school placed in the top 100 of scoring just once, and in that one year, they were still close to not even finishing in the top 100. The offense has only managed to score 20 points per game in three different seasons, with the highest being 23.8 in 2018. In 2013 and 2015, they averaged 15 points each per game. Since 2010, their defense has been abysmal as well. They have only finished in the top 100 in points allowed twice, in 2013 and 2018. In 2015, they finished with the worst defense in the nation where they allowed 46 points per game. In 2017, they finished 129th out of a possible 130 teams where they allowed 43 points per game. The 2018 season was the only year where they allowed 30 points or less per game and they allowed exactly 30. This team has been an all-around disaster since Mangino left the program and it's truly sad to see. But things are looking up for the program. Enough with the bashing, let's talk about the positives. For starters, Kansas has a new AD in Jeff Long who is fully prepared to fix the football program. Already, Kansas has a $26 million indoor football facility that is ready for spring drills, and the university planned to create new athletic dorms over the last two years. In an attempt to fix them, he got rid of Beatty for the more experienced Les Miles. Long went out and got a coach that is not only an experienced college coach, but one that has had a lot of success on and off the field. He was able to pull in good recruiting classes at LSU, keep them competitive, and help turn plenty of college athletes into NFL players. Last year, Kansas saw substantial jumps in both their offense and defense, and although it doesn't take that much for them to make those jumps, you should expect them to take another jump this upcoming season. It will not be a quick fix by any means, and both Long and Miles know this, but they are ready. We've seen plenty of college teams turn it around after years of mediocrity, 
but all it takes is a smart AD, a good coach, a few good recruiting classes, and one good team to kickstart it all. But only time will tell if Kansas football will be able to rebound from this or if this dark era will continue. This has been a video on Kansas football. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys next time.